Here's the Nokia N80. We tried getting away with pronouncing it Nokia like most Americans do last time, and you guys called us on it, so we'll say it right today. Anyhow, this is one of the new N-series smartphones. It's already shipping, but won't come to the US till later this year. Below the large, bright LCD screen is the D-pad surrounded by the usual soft buttons and call keys. The only new addition is the media key, a small button that quickly brings up all the multimedia apps. Above the screen, there's a VGA camera for video calls if you're lucky enough to live in a place where you can make those. Maybe it's because the front of the phone has so many keys, but the sides seem remarkably empty. The only thing on the left side is a slot for the mini SD card. The bottom has a tiny charging port and Nokia's pop port connector, which is used for the included stereo headset and headphone adapters. The only side button at all is the camera button. Hold it down to fire up this 3 megapixel monster with a very bright flash. It's fixed focus, but there's a switch for macro mode in case you want to snap something right in front of the lens. Centered at the top is the power button, which is tiny but strong, since it has a number of functions. The phone slides open with a nice smooth action to reveal a large keypad. We just wish the slide was spring assisted, so it would feel snappier. Every time you shut the slide, the phone asks if you'd like to lock the keypad. It remains unlocked otherwise. One of the most talked about features of Series 60 version 3 is the new web browser. But this isn't it. This is the WAP browser. The new web browser is a separate application here. Web is based on KHTML, the same code that powers Apple's Safari. It can deal with just about any website you can throw at it, like our site for example. The N80 has both 2G and 3G cellular data, but it can also get online using Wi-Fi as well. The Wi-Fi is super easy to use, one of the best implementations we've used on a phone so far. And we're using our home network to browse the web here. Let's skip watching it load and get right to the good stuff. When a site loads, all you see is the upper left corner, but pressing 8 brings up a map of the whole page. You can move the red box around to zoom in on that area. Notice how all the columns of text are rendered so that they're only as wide as the screen, or the red box. You can move your cursor around, or hold down on it to scroll. This works both vertically and horizontally. When you continue to scroll, a mini-map pops up to show you where you are on the page. You can also get around a page by searching for a text string. A similar search box can be used to search the web. Speaking of searching the web, let's go to Google. Like PhoneScoop, Google's full site loads when you visit it from a web browser. Now that we have a second page loaded, you can see navigating between the pages in your history is a visual experience, with a rotating preview of each page instead of a list of sites. Pressing the media key brings up a menu with shortcuts to the multimedia applications. Holding it down immediately opens whichever is in the center, in this case, the music player. Although there are no playback control keys on the N80, the speakers and software still make this an excellent music phone. You can sort through your tracks using artist, album, or track name from the ID3 tags. Once you hit play, you can leave the music player to do other things. A status bar on the home screen gives you easy access to track name and play pause controls. Let's leave Gnarls Barkley playing while we check out the camera. Since they included a 3 megapixel sensor, you'd expect Nokia to give you some serious camera software, and they don't disappoint. It's got a fantastic video recorder, and all the adjustments and controls you'd find on a mid-range digital still camera. The macro switch doesn't just move the lens, it actually changes how some of the camera's features operate. We'll flip it so we can take a close-up of our Panda Z pilot. Since the lens is a fixed focus, all you have to do is point and shoot. We've noticed the camera doesn't fire until slightly after the screen freezes. Be warned. Now that we've got the picture, Better flip the lens back to normal mode or we'll forget. Okay, that's better. Before we check out a few more features, I'm sorry to say, but it's time to say goodbye to Gnarls. Like we said, holding down the media key will take us straight into the music player. 
It sure would be nice to have a play pause key somewhere on the phone, huh? The gallery and reel player are the only other applications besides the camera that work in landscape. But unlike the camera, they're only in landscape mode part of the time. The gallery uses a carousel that lets you cycle through your pictures and video by date. It's cute, but kind of slow. What we really want to show you isn't the gallery, but the quality of the video camera. Be warned, though not as explicit as a Paris Hilton video, this will feature mature content namely an Englishman drinking moonshine. Video is recorded at CIF, which is slightly larger than QVGA, and it is totally smooth. The sound is loud and clear, but Nigel's not making much noise here. This is easily on par with what most digital cameras are capable of. Finally, it's time for the text test. It didn't take us long to get used to the large keypad, and once we did, typing was very fast. At first we had to hold the phone in one hand and text with the other. Then we learned how to balance the phone so that we could do it one-handed and fly. One final recommendation. If you get this phone and live here in the States, be sure to go into the network settings and set the phone to GSM only. Otherwise the phone is constantly searching for a 3G network and it will kill your battery in no time.